Franny, what does it say? Don't go up. So I woke up this morning, a 38-year-old guy who's married and has three kids. When did that happen? Are you, are you old or are you young? Young. How old are you? Five. Savings time. See, time is not equal. The older you get, the faster it moves. I just mean that when you think of the, the scope of your life, that's a unit of time we all understand uniquely. I'm 38, I know what 38 years means. And one year as a percentage of that is pretty small. But for, so we all get one lifetime. This is the constant. No matter who you are or how long you live, you only get one lifetime. And a year, or the years that make up a lifetime, well this becomes the variable. I'm 38, she's five. got 38 years. Franny's five, five years. So as a percentage of my whole life, a year is only 2.6% of that life. But for Franny, who's five, one year for her is 20% of her life. A year for me is seven times faster than a year for her. Remember being a little kid? Remember how long a year seemed? It was like an eternity. Now think back to last year. And the thing that I've only recently, the thing that I've recently come to appreciate is how much of that life you spend focusing on the future versus focusing on the past. This is my notebook from 2003. This crazy chart here, it's just labeled dominate and it's my, my plan to dominate in life, written in 2003. Now, I was young then, I had accomplished very little. So when I thought of my life, when I took inventory of what my life was, it was largely aspirational. It was about where I wanted to be in the future, not what I'd done in the past. So this is life, this is where you start, this is where you end, and this is me. A life is defined by the things you've done in the past, as well as the things you aspire to do in the future. Looking ahead, looking back. Where are you going? And as I grew up, especially as I became like a teenager and when I moved to New York City, I realized that what defined me were my aspirations, were the things that I wanted for myself in the future. So if you imagine being a 19 year old me and saying, 19 year old Casey, tell me about yourself. I wouldn't have talked about my past. I wouldn't have talked about the C minus I got in 10th grade English, or that I had a job that I hated, or that I lived in a tiny apartment with three roommates. I would have talked about my future, the things I wanted to do, the life I wanted to build, my dreams, my aspiration. I lived in that future and that's what defined me then. But as I got older and started looking back, I realized I'd accumulated a lot in life. In my, in my 20s, I'd accumulated so much that defined who I was. I was still largely defined by my aspirations, but my past started to, started to feel like it was contributing to who I was then. <laughs> and now I find myself here. I'm almost 40. I've lived through my 20s, I've lived through my 30s, and I still have my aspirations, but so much of who I am has been defined by my past now. He likes it. That's oh my God. Yes, it is. Leaving high school, leaving my parents' house, having a kid, moving to New York City, 
September 11th. That's 20 year old Casey riding my bike up the West Side Highway to get away from, to get away from the towers. Getting my first real job, quitting my first real job, being single, meeting Candace, getting married, starting a family. After like a, a dozen years of trying, finally figuring out my career. Yes, I'm starting a proper daily vlog. That fear and uncertainty that, that really defines early adulthood, all of that is in my past. Life, life is this freight train and it, it leaves the station slowly, but it picks up momentum and it goes faster and faster and faster. And then you wake up one day and it's 2020 and you're not a kid anymore. And you become that adult that you remember when you were a kid, you remember looking at thinking, I'll never be that old, but you will be that old. And there's nothing, there's nothing you can do to change that. Happy 91st birthday, Nana. Thank you, sweetheart. What would I do without you, Casey? How does it feel to be 91? Uh... She was my hero. That was my grandmother. When she was a kid, she discovered her, her love for dancing. That was her passion, her dream. She realized it her whole life. And I remember vividly having this conversation with her just before she died, just after that video of her birthday was taking place. We're in her dance studio. The walls are covered in pictures from her career, like her performing for the troops during World War II, her on Broadway in the, the late 1930s. And I said to her, I said, Nana, I said, Nana, your life has been so exceptional. Your past so extraordinary. But what do you think about in terms of your life when you think about the future. Nana, which of your upcoming birthdays would you say you're looking forward to the most? And she said in her infinite wisdom, I don't think about the future. And then she said, and this is the point, this is the point of all. And then she said, but, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm so grateful to have one more day that that is what I focus on. I focus on right now. I try to think about that every day. I try to think about that every day when I wake up. I, I know from experience that spending too much energy romanticizing the past or dreaming about the future can come at the expense of, of appreciating today. And I'm not 92 years old and I hope I've got a long, long future ahead of me, but I don't know. What I do know is that I've got right now and that's pretty great. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might just miss it. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it.